Hello and welcome to another quick tutorial video for Final Fluids. In this video we will discuss how we can use particles to control Final Fluid effects. Before we dive deeper, let's have a look at the scene right now. The scene is pretty simple. We have a camera, we have a thinking particle system, and we have our particles and a dummy object, as well as our Final Fluid grids. So pretty straightforward, simple setup. Let me just play the scene for you. And we see three particles right now spinning uh, in place. So let's have a look at the thinking particle setup, how, what we did here. We have one particle group that we call smoke. And then we have our dynamic set where we create the particles. The first thing is we grab the dummy object position and we feed the position into our position born. And then this is used to create these three particles. Another thing we do here is we have a random size variation. So each particle born gets a random size. And if we change, for example, the value two, we can see that we get different variant sizes for each particle. And then we set the size. And the next thing is just our standard shape we assign a cube object and the size of the cube is dependent on the random size from before. Then we grab all the smoke particles we created from the smoke group and we assign a spin to this particle. So right now 1.5 seconds for a full revolution and we use a random axis. So that's all we have here in the setup. Nothing really special, but this is about telling you how to control fine fluid parameters or effects. So we have these spinning things here. Let's go to file fluid and see our real time preview. But before we can see something, because the, we are now using simulated particles, we have to create a cache. Thinking particles is calculating the simulation every time you, we press play. It's a new uh, simulation. So we have to cache it. And if we have done uh, the caching, we can now start uh, our preview of the particles and hopefully we will see what we have in our particle systems. And there you go. We have our flame fireballs here with the particles and we see them spinning around the axis, random axis. So that's exactly what we would have expected. And the size is taken automatically from the particle size. So any particle system, you don't need to have thinking particles. You could use tie flow, for example, or any other standard max particles. So the size will be taken automatically. That's from the particle interface in 3D Studio Max. So there's no worry about that. This is done automatically. Keep in mind when you change something in a simulation system, you have to press the cache file. So right now we're still seeing the old simulation. Now we've updated the cache file and now we can work on our fireballs. They are now much bigger as we can see in our viewport as well. So that's the only important thing you have to uh, think about with this real-time workflow. If something changes over time with another simulation, you have to uh, create the cache file. If you forget creating the cache file, you are just getting uh, whatever it was in the cache. So press the cache. It's really fast and you get the uh, changed particle simulation instantly in real time with your final fluid effect. So how did we do the spinning? Because the spinning is not really something every particle system has. So how can we transfer spin to our final fluid and uh, make our uh, flow or final fluid simulation spin. We use uh, the velocity linear setting for that. So we give each emitter a linear velocity. We can set that in our emitter. So by the way, our emitter here, we have one emitter in our final fluid group. That's the smoke and air emitter. So let me just select that. And as you can see, the emitter is set to particles. And down here, we picked our particle system. That's thinking particles right now. And we picked our particle group where we have the particles or want to access the particles. And now we want to control the velocities of our final fluid effect. And the velocity means per emitter, we can give it a direction where we exhaust our fuel. 
so where the fuel is actually blown. And this is done through the linear velocity feature in our emitters. So right now I've turned off the data channel and we can see it's blowing down in the Z axis. And we can check that again down here and we see linear Z is 1500. And now if I turn back on the data channel, now all these linear X, Y, Z values are controlled through our particle system. Now we can do a lot of amazing things. We can have particle dependent effects influencing our fluid effect. And we do that by setting per particle our alignment value. And uh, within the alignment value, we have the spin first, then we set the alignment through our point three. And I used a point three because of the multipliers. So we can adjust the strength a little bit because not always the particle effects match our effects in the final fluid effects. So and then we just set the velocity linear value and that's it. Final fluid grabs the value per particle and now we have 100% control over our final fluid effect through the particles itself. It's that simple. And this is, you need this for any kind of special things. For example, if you just want to control the amount of particles or speed, for example, let's give them a, a little bit of speed. There's nothing you need to do that works with any particle system. Speed, amount of particles and size is taken automatically. So there's no extra work you need to do there. Just keep in mind, you have to cache. Uh, because if you forget to cache, because now we changed our simulation, we need to grab all the new data, all the new simulation we have there. And there we go. Now we have everything we have changed. We see in file fluid and can now start working on our fire and smoke and whatever effects we want to create here. So it's that simple. Just create the data channel, supply the values, and there you go. And everything you do here is just working automatically. Just keep in mind, cache every time you change something in the simulation and it will be represented instantly in real time in the final fluid. So another big question is that comes to mind is how do you know, how on earth would you know which data channels to create? So how did we find the name of the data channel, the velocity linear data channel. Actually, it's pretty simple and straightforward. Let's say we wanted to control, for example, the couple rate. Right now, I want to control the couple rate and the couple rate is nothing else than an extra multiplier to our velocities in X, Y, Z. So we can control on top the strength of um, the velocities, linear, and also the angular velocities, we can control that with a couple rate. It's just an extra multiplier. So now I want to control this uh, value, the couple rate, and this is how it's done. You always start with the prefix f fluid underscore. That's your prefix. That means when final fluid finds this prefix, it means, oh, that's for me. And now we want to go to the velocities, so velocity, and the parameter we want to control is couple rate. So we just type in couple rate. And that's actually it. Now we have control over this. We need to be careful about the type. It's a point three, X, Y, Z. And we add that data channel. And now if I would activate this data channel, we can see linear X, Y, Z. And now couple rate X, Y, Z is controlled by the particle system. Now we have full control over the velocity multiplier. So if we were now to just use that as is, let me go back to the fluid grid. We'll cache it now because we have a new situation simulation and preview it. Now our velocity is gone. We don't see the output, the exhaust changing in direction. So it's just zero because our value in the velocity couple rate is zero. So now we need to set somehow a reasonable value for our velocity multiplier. And we do that with uh, the particle speed. Let's just use the particle speed directly 
controlling the velocity of the exhaust of the fuel. So we do that by adding um, a particle data helper. So we grab the velocity of the uh, particles. Let me just grab that. Um, so we want the velocity, as I said. So the velocity of the particle is directly controlling now our multiplier for the exhaust uh, velocity for our emitter. And here's a little trick. I don't know if you know that, but I'll, let me just uh, explain. I use the velocity and put it in the x, y, z components of a point three. That means right now I'm not getting the velocity vector. I'm getting the length of the velocity, which is, equals the speed. So now I'm getting the particle speed out of my point three as the vector. So x, y, z is the length values and I'm getting out the uh, vector now and I'm now setting with the particle data the velocity couple rate and let me just uh, connect the particle so this is per particle every particle has now a different velocity multiplier so the exhaust of our emitter the fuel exhaust the speed is controlled by the speed of the particle. And I have a point three, which allows me to uh, uh, do some multiplication. So I get the velocity that could be 10, 10,000, 10 million, I don't know. So it's always good to have a multiplier. And then it's also easier for doing variations. Let me just start with two. And uh, now let's have a look uh, if that actually works because our particles are moving we already gave them a speed, so they are moving. We go back to our final fluid. Caching is important, so we get the new simulation data set. And there we go. Right now, we've overdone the speed. So we are blowing out the fuel so fast, it has not barely time to ignite. So let me just reduce this to one. So now we get the original velocity vectors of our particles. And let's have a look at that. Press the cache button. And oh, it's still pretty strong. So this is what I was talking about. You never know how the scalings of the particles are, how fast they are. So it's really good that we have this multiplier in here. So let me just um, reduce it by half. So I'll just use half of the velocity speed is now controlling our exhaust speed of the fuel from the emitter. And there we go. So the faster particles will exhaust more fuel and slower will exhaust uh, less fuel. So this is uh, how you control with a particle system an advanced particle system final fluid effect. And keep in mind, you can control everything in final fluid. Is it uh, gravity values, uh, amount of fuel, amount of smoke, um, the temperature, you can change the temperature based on particles. Uh, you can have other particles change temperature of a, of a final fluid effect and so on. It's limitless. It's really a powerful combination, advanced particle systems and final fluid. And keep in mind, you don't have to have uh, thinking particles for that. You can also use tie flow or standard uh, 3D Studio Max particle systems. I hope you enjoyed this uh, video. And check out our other videos if you didn't uh, do that yet. And please join our public beta. It's free. You can test and check out Final Fluid. Thank you for watching this video and see you soon.